who frequently says she doesn't have that much money to spend on books because she's a broke college graduate. She to spend a lot of money on books. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Hi, hello, how are you? How has your week been? So we're doing another book haul. I personally love watching book hauls just to see like the new books that people might be talking about and like what books are trending and popular. So here we are with a book haul. Now I could have sworn that this was going to be a mini book haul. However, when I was gathering the books, getting ready to film, there were a lot more than I thought there were going to be. Like I could have sworn I already talked about some of these in another book haul, but I went back and watched it and I didn't. So it's a mini book haul with a lot more books than I thought there were gonna be. Anyway, the first book we got is A Funny Story by Emily Henry. I'm supposed to be reading this for a book club. I think everybody else has already read the book. However, I still have yet to pick it up. This is Emily Henry's new release and I so far have loved Beach Read, Book Lovers, and Happy Place. So I had to pick up Funny Story to add to my Emily Henry collection. Oh, rats. Got an endorsement from Colin Hoover on the back. That's awkward. Once Upon a Broken Heart. I bought this one at the same time as I bought Funny Story because I was using an Amazon gift card. And since I share an Amazon account with my entire family, if I don't use up the entire gift card all at once, somebody else will. So I, I added this one to my purchase of Funny Story to use up the whole gift card. But I also am just super excited to read this book. This is the first book in the once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, which is like the follow-up series to Carnival by Stephanie Garber, which, and I've heard so many people say that they love this series, this trilogy, much more than they liked Carnival. So, and as someone who loved Carnival, I'm super excited to get into this world. And since I have zero self-control and cannot wait until I read the first book in the series to decide whether or not I like it and then proceed to buy the rest of the books in the series. I went ahead and bought The Ballad of Never After. Um, yeah. The next book that I have is Girl Abroad by Elle Kennedy, which is her newest release. Now I love Elle Kennedy's writing and her stories, but so far all that I've read from her are her hockey romances. However, she does have other books that are not hockey romances that I have yet to delve into. And I've heard good things about this book. What I know about this book is that this girl, whatever her name is, she goes abroad and she ends up living in a place where all of her roommates are guys, I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, the main character's name is Abby and she spells it the same way as my best friend. Wait, this is the first time I'm like reading it back and this sounds so good. And then my most recent book purchase is American Royals by Catherine McGee. I got this from Half Price Books. I think I would really enjoy this book. I love reading books with royalty in them. I mean, as you can see, I have started reading the Princess Diaries series. This book has just really intrigued me and has been on my Goodreads TBR for a while. And this book is actually in pretty good shape. I'm wondering like, did anybody even read this book? I don't really know anything about the plot of this story. Sounds like I'd like it, right? Now, moving on to the books I could have sworn I already talked about in a book haul. First, we've got The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This is her like second like popular novel. I know she wrote The Dead Romantics. However, that book's premise just like didn't really seem like it'd be my kind of book that I would like. However, I have heard such good things about this book. And so I picked it up because I wanna be in the know with these books that everybody else is liking. The next book we have is Ember in the Ashes. Now, when I bought this book, I bought it purely because the cover intrigued me. And when I read at the back, it sounded really interesting. There's an empire. The main character's brother gets arrested. She decides to go join the military for the empire as a spy so that she can get the rebels help to save her brother. And there she meets the school's finest soldier, blah, blah, blah. What's funny is that at the time that I bought this book, I'd never seen anybody talk about it. And now since I've bought this, I have seen Destiny Sidwell and Sarah Caroli talking about these books. Am I a trendsetter? No, I'm not. But tell me that this cover doesn't intrigue you. Then we've got A Door in the Dark. It was one of the like Barnes and Noble like YA book club picks or something a couple months ago. This book has wizards in it and I love wizards. Wizards of Waverly Place used to be my favorite TV show and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So you've got wizards in your book? I'm in. This is A Door in the Dark by 
Scott Rankin. I am so bad at pronouncing things, guys. Now, out of all of the books that I've ever purchased, this is probably the one that I can say with most certainty I bought strictly because it was pretty. Because look at it. It is pretty. The do-over. It's got stenciled edges. And for the fact that it was only $13 at Barnes & Noble, I couldn't leave it there. But this book, from what I understand, is a Groundhog Day situation with the main character. Now, something I was thinking about is that like, I'm not sure if I've ever really watched or read a book that has a Groundhog's Day situation where like the person relives that day over and over again. And like, obviously I'm assuming in this book, she's gonna fall in love with somebody, which like, I'm interested to see how that ends up working out at the end, because obviously the other person doesn't remember any of their interactions that they had over the day. So like, how would they end up as a couple at the end if half of the couple doesn't remember like any of their memories? And then we have Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor, which I put on my t Goodreads TBR a while ago because it, the premise is exactly like Carval. And we know how much I loved Carval because how many times have I talked about this series in this video? But it follows sisters who, this hotel like travels around and is like a super exclusive, like high-end hotel that people want to go visit. And these sisters really want to be able to experience what the hotel has to offer. However, they can't afford to stay at the hotel. So they get jobs at the hotel. And obviously it's not what it seems like on the outside. Now, if it's any consolation, these last two books I did not purchase. They might be the ones I'm most excited about out of all of these books. About the middle of May, my roommate went on a trip to the UK and she did some book shopping, but she was able to get it to where she like bought the books and they shipped them to Texas. That way she didn't have to travel with them. And for some reason, they didn't put all of her books in one box. And so one of the boxes showed up to our house completely waterlogged and she was so upset. And so she messaged the like customer service people from this bookstore and was like, hey, these books are damaged, could I get replacements? Luckily, they did say that they were gonna send her replacements. And so she was like, once I get my replacements, like, would you like these books? I was like, yes, of course I would. I would love free books. And so that was how I ended up with indie copies of Magnolia Parks, A Long Way Home, and Daisy Hates. I have never talked about these books. I have never like really shown much interest in reading these books, but I have to say, I absolutely love these covers and I want to own all of these covers. I wish more book covers looked like the indie versions of Magnolia Parks Universe did. Like everything on these covers has just been like super thought out and like really applies to the book. You've seen the new covers of Magnolia Parks. I think they're terrible compared to what they used to be. And so I'm so happy that I now have started my collection of the indie covers of the Magnolia Parks universe. So thank you, Emma, for getting damaged books and then being able to get a replacement so I can have these. So those are all of the books that I have purchased recently. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you guys like this type of content. Comment down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. And subscribe to my channel for more bookish content in the future. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.